Today we're gonna to be hooking the Anchor Solex F3800 with one expansion battery and 2000 watts of solar up to my house today to see how long it can run for. Now I have two 400 watt all power solar panels that we're gonna connect into one of the ports on the Anchor Solex F3800. And I also have two 600 watt all power solar panels. Whew, those ones are actually lighter than the 400 watt ones that I'm gonna connect into the other port of the Anchor Solex F3800. Now these 600 watt panels have an open circuit current of 52 volts and the 400 watt panels have an open circuit current of 45 volts. And if you've seen my anchor video previously on the review of the unit, it'll take up to 60 volts of input. So we're gonna have to parallel these panels together so we don't go over that 60 volts. Would have been nice to see a higher limit on it, but it can take in up to 25 amps on each input. So we're gonna connect four of these panels and see what kind of input we can get on this nice sunny day. Now I have two sets of 10 gauge wires here all the way to the XT60 port, which is gonna plug into the unit. And I'm gonna be paralleling plate panels into here. Now, if you're gonna use a pretty high amperage, you're gonna get, wanna go with the proper size wire so that it doesn't get hot and not gonna reduce your power input. But we're gonna go ahead and run these wires out to the unit, stretch them out as far as we can and get the panels connected. So I got these solar wires going in through my window here. And then this is the cable that we're gonna be connecting the solar generator to my house through my generator interlock port here. And I showed this a little bit in my initial review video. So go watch that if you wanna see more about that and how it works. And I also cut this little piece of foam to fit in this window so that I can shut the window on here, getting prepared in case winter time comes and I run out of power. I have a good way to prevent any air from coming in. And I actually use this foam out of a scooter that I just received. So that's what this foam's from. But I'm gonna put the foam in there, run the wire through it. I still gotta cut notches for this wire. And it'll all be sealed up in case of an outage during winter. Right now it's 11.07 AM. We're gonna go ahead and turn the power on to the outlets. And this is a 240 volt power station, so it will supply both legs of my panel here. You have two different output ports here. Check out my review video to see more about those. And then you can plug directly into the unit here. But let's go down and flip some breakers. All right, now the only thing I'm gonna turn off is my water heater because it pulls like 5,000 watts in a power outage. I don't really need that. And in fact, I just reviewed a portable propane water heater that would work really good in a pinch in a power outage. If I really needed to get a shower, I could use that. And my clothes dryer, don't really need that. I'm gonna leave everything else on. And with that being said, I do have my air conditioners and heat turned off right now because it's that time of year where it's almost fall and it's been getting up pretty high temperatures during the day, but at night it cools down enough to keep my house pretty cool. So I was able to turn those off. Now in a real world situation, mostly wintertime, I will be running furnaces. And you could see in my initial review that it will run my furnaces just fine. So this will be a good test running everything else in my house. So now to switch on the solar generator, I would have to shut my main breaker off. It's gonna get dark here for a second. Then I could flip this interlock up. Got some light from my phone there. So now once the main breaker is off, I can go ahead and flip that up, which will prevent that main breaker from being able to turn on. Then I could turn on the solar generator and that turns my power back on. Now we're running off a battery and I'm gonna start the timer now. All right, so we're using 972 watts currently. It's been about 15 minutes. So let's get some solar hooked into here, down to 97%, and we'll see what kind of input we can get. And as the sun moves, you're gonna wanna move these panels around here. That way you keep them in line with the sun to get full input, maximum input. And put one 400 watt panel, probably about right here. Line it up towards the sun a little bit, turn it this way, because the sun will be moving around this way throughout the day. Plug this panel in to my Y adapter here, and then we'll get the other panel set up in front of this one. All right, got that panel deployed. Let's get it plugged in. So currently with the two 400 watt panels plugged in, I'm getting 559 watts of input and 564 watts of output. So it should almost sustain 96% minus a little bit of inverter inefficiencies with just having those two panels plugged in with the current load that my house is drawing. And this load's gonna fluctuate because I have two refrigerators connected currently a big stand-up freezer and whatever else kicks on and off throughout the day. It should fluctuate anywhere between 5 to 1100 watts unless I turn on the oven which it will power but it will use a lot of wattage if I do that or the microwave or things like that. If the air compressor in the garage kicks on 
So it will fluctuate up and down, but currently it should sustain this. So now let's get those 600 watt panels plugged in as well. Get this first one laid out right here. Pretty easy to deploy these 600 watt panels. However, there is no kickstand, so it's a little bit harder to angle these towards the sun, but it's good when the sun's overhead. And if I do this right, I shouldn't need any extension cables. Let me get this one plugged in first. And we'll get this panel over here. That way we don't need any extensions. So if you have a big enough area, these panels are actually pretty easy to deploy and pretty nice to use. I'm gonna go ahead and plug these ones in first. I gained just over 300 watts with this one. So now let's see what we're getting. 1,187 watts of input, now 1,200 watts. And I'm only outputting 550 watts. So this thing should charge back up to 100% in no time. Now one thing to keep in mind when using these panels because they don't have stands and you have to lay them on the ground when it's really hot and sunny out I've had days where it's been over 90 degrees and I deployed these panels and it did kill the grass underneath from them getting hot so keep that in mind. Now a lot of my grass is dead because we haven't had rain here in a while so I don't really care and today should be in the high 80s so maybe it'll kill it maybe it won't but like I said it's already half dead anyway. With these panels having kickstands it's a little bit more airflow and Either way, I love both panels. These ones have really good, fast, easy deployment for charging up units quickly. These you can angle a little bit more towards the sun to get better output sometimes, but they both work very well. And again, those are all powers panels. I'll put links down below in the description to everything I talk about today and use the solar generator, the Anchor Solix F3800, the all power panels, the 400 and the 600 watt panels, as well as some of the other solar products and items that I use. So check out those links if you guys are considering purchasing some of this stuff and it'll help support the channel. And let me know what you think below. Let me know if you ever hooked up a solar generator to your home, how long it lasted, what you ran with it. And if you had one of these, if you don't have one, how you would use it. So one of the main questions I always get about a solar generator is why don't you just get a gas generator? For one, a solar generator or a power station battery backup is a lot quieter, a lot more environmentally friendly. But to be honest, it's not going to fit everybody's needs. A really perfect scenario is to have both. That way, when the power station dies on a cloudy day or a rainy day, that's usually when you lose power. You're not going to have good solar. So then you fire up your generator to recharge the battery and then you can shut your gas generator off, run the battery down until it gets close to being depleted and then charge it back up with the generator. Then you don't have to have your generator sitting there running 24 seven to power your home. And that's how I intend to use mine in a true power outage. But the solar input is definitely nice to have and free energy, especially on sunny days. So it's been 37 minutes. And like I said, down to 96%, we have 1190 watts of input going in and 774 watts currently going out. It says it should be totally recharged at this rate in 1.4 hours. So we're just gonna keep an eye on it throughout the day and see how it does. All right, we got the power cranking now. It's been just over two hours. We're at 98%. I was reaching 100%, getting close to it. So I turned on my dehumidifier in my basement and then I turned my furnace, well, one of my furnaces, I have two of them, turned it on recirculate. Now we're putting out 1800 watts and we're taking in 1237 watts. I didn't want to waste that free energy coming from the sun. So I turned some other stuff on and it's been running perfect. I actually gained a little bit of charge since we started and it's been two hours so far. Check back with you in a little bit. All right, it's been just over three and a half hours. I'm taking in 1,213 watts of solar. From the 600 watt panels, I'm getting 16.26 amps at 666 watts. And from the two 400 watt panels, I'm getting 17.59 amps at 521 watts for a total of right around 1200 watts. And the output just went down to 1,038 watts. Just over three and a half hours, we're down to 92%. But again, I have a few more things running because I was trying to use some power, got my furnace recirculating, got a dehumidifier on, a couple ceiling fans now, and just trying to use some power up, but very good overall so far. So a lot of people always debate whether or not these are worth it rather than using a gas generator and these aren't going to fit everybody's needs perfectly especially on cloudy days but so far three and a half hours just imagine if you were running a gas generator for three and a half hours you'd be paying for gas and wear and tear on that for that amount of time this is super quiet still at 92 percent getting free energy from the sun now grant you this system is going to cost you a lot more by the time you pay for this unit here 
plus all the solar panels that I have out there running this. Honestly, in my opinion, what's best is to have both this and a gas generator if you can afford it. That way on cloudy days, you can use the gas generator to charge this up and then use this to power your home once it gets fully charged. And then you don't have to listen to or supply gas for that generator that's gonna run nonstop. It'll actually give it a break, especially if your home's not using a ton of energy. Mine is using 1,077 watts right now, but that's a little bit high. I have a lot of things running, router, modem, security cameras, two refrigerators, a freezer, furnace running on recirculate, a couple ceiling fans, and probably a bunch of other stuff drawing power. In a true power outage, I would probably shut a lot of that stuff off that I don't need and just worry about my refrigerators, my freezer, and a furnace in the wintertime. Really don't care about air conditioning in the summer. I can always run ceiling fans or fans, but this is a good option with a gas generator in my opinion. But I wanted to get a good idea of how long this unit can run my house on a sunny day. That way if I lose power in the winter time, I could power my home, no problem, heat my home, and I know what to expect beforehand. All right, we really got the power cranking out now. My wife's starting to cook dinner on the electric stove, so let's see how much power we're using. We're using 3,060 some watts, and we're still getting 1,190 watts of input from solar down to 90% and it's been three hours and 53 minutes, almost four hours so far. So we've only used 2% in four hours. Like I said, my wife's cooking dinner right now. So that's what's nice about the anchor is that it actually outputs 240 volts. So you could power larger items like electric ranges and other big electric items. Just know that if you do that and if you're drawing a lot of wattage, like 3000 watts, you are gonna drain this unit fairly quickly. Right now it's saying, I have, well, it's fluctuating, but it's saying I have 7.7 .7 hours remaining, now 3.1 hours remaining. So it's gonna fluctuate as the stove kicks on and off. Now it's saying in 12.8 hours, it'll be recharged, 6.5 hours remaining. So as the stove kicks on and off, it is gonna fluctuate there, but we'll see how much power we run down to when she gets done cooking on that stove. But the stove definitely draws a lot of watts, about 2,500 watts or so with one burner. And I also showed using the stove as well as some other things in the initial review video. So if you wanna see how that worked then, go check that out. And thanks for watching everyone. It's all because of you that I make these videos. So leave a comment down below, give me some feedback. And like I said, thanks for watching. All right, everyone, it's been a few hours since my wife was done cooking dinner. The power station was drained down to about 88% when she was done cooking. I let it charge back up for a little bit. It's been seven hours since we started this test and the panels are just starting to get in the shade a little bit. The sun is starting to go down behind those trees. So we're gonna see 2000 watts of solar panels. We're gonna see what kind of input we're getting now into the power station and what percentage it's at. So just over seven hours and we're down to 91%, 524 watts of output, 520, and still 360 watts of input coming in, even though the sun's starting to go down. Probably not much longer, I won't be getting any input. From the two 600 watt panels, I'm only getting 42 watts because they're mostly in the shade now. So most of this 350 watts, right around 310 watts of it is coming from the 400 watt solar panels and the other 38 watts is coming from the 600 watt panels. So that's where the panels with the kickstands are gonna come in a little bit more handy is when the sun starts getting real far away and starts going down, you'll be able to angle the panels with the kickstands a little bit better than the ones that you just lay flat on the ground. So you get a little bit more out of the 600 watt ones when the sun's overhead, but then you get a little bit more out of the 400 watt ones when the sun is further away or very early in the morning. All right, everyone, so today is actually the next day. At about 7.30, the sun went down a little too much, wasn't really gaining and enough wattage so I put my solar panels away. So yesterday during the day when I had solar out, I ran the unit for seven hours and 31 minutes. And when I unhooked solar, even after doing everything, cooking dinner, everything like that, I was still at 90% charge on the Anchor Solex. And then after that, I ran my house for another six hours just off of this unit, taking the unit from 90% down to 30% in six hours. And it seemed like the wattage was no less than 430 watts to normally around 700 watts. It never really dropped lower than that. In a true power outage, I would probably go around and unplug a lot of things that I didn't need because just off the top of my head, some of the things that are running, and those blinds are annoying me, <laughs> the things that are running is my router, my modem, a bunch of security cameras, an NVR 
recorder, two full-size refrigerators, a stand-up freezer, and not to mention a bunch of other loads that are probably just drawing random power. But at 12.30 in the morning, it said the unit had about four hours to run, which would have probably shut the unit down and shut my power off somewhere around 4 to 4.30 in the morning. So I shut the unit off at about 30% at 12.30, almost one o'clock in the morning and turned my grid power back on. This morning when I woke up, I connected it back to the solar. Haven't been running my house off of it, but just let, been letting it charge from solar to see how long it would take to charge back up. And it's been charging from 10 o'clock this morning. It is now 1.16 in the afternoon. So about three hours and 15 minutes. And I got it from 30% back up to 67% and it's pulling in 1244 watts of input currently from those solar panels. So it's actually charging up fairly quickly. It should hit 100% here by the end of today. Now I'll grant you these results are gonna vary depending on what loads you have running, how many refrigerators, freezers. Um, I didn't have my hot water tank on. It would have drained this unit really fast pulling the 4,000 watts or so that that hot water heater would pull. If my wife was doing laundry using the clothes dryer, that would have been pulling probably tons of energy and would drain this thing super quick. So large loads like that, this is not gonna be really good for unless you have a ton of expansion batteries. And you can also put two of these units together to double the output of 12,000 watts if needed. So if you have the money to spend and you can go big enough on the unit, nice to have. And they also have a smart home panel, but unfortunately I never got that to be able to test. So don't know exactly what all the features of that are. But overall, this is gonna be great in a backup scenario. And like I said, I have a 3,500 watt inverter generator that in a pinch on cloudy days, I could plug into this thing and charge it up in a few hours and then run this unit at least around 10 hours powering my home without having to listen to that gas generator all night or using a bunch of fuel for it. So pretty cool in my opinion. But like I said, I think the best case scenario is gonna be using this with a gas generator because Majority of the time when I lose power here, it's rainy, cloudy, windy, and I'm not gonna be able to get good solar input. But let me know down in the comments below if you have one of these, how you plan on using it, and if you don't have one, how you would use it if you did get one. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a pretty fun time making it. Please consider subscribing, checking out my other videos, and I'll see y'all around on the next one. And if you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll leave links down below. They will be affiliate links and I will receive a small commission if you do use those links. But check them out down below. Any coupons I can find, I'll put down there as well. Thanks for watching, everyone.